Good morning everybody, hope all is well. Today we're gonna have a look at this, the Panasonic S9. Camera that uh, I wasn't expecting from Panasonic, but a camera that I've used for a couple of days now and uh, I'm really impressed from what I'm seeing. Stay tuned. S9 Panasonic full frame camera, uh, basically an S5 Mark II but in a much smaller body. So before we do anything, I just want to say that this whole video will be shot on the Panasonic S9 because I do have two of them. I have a blue there and I have a green one here. Uh, so you know, every, everything you're seeing is shot with the S9. So before we get started with this video, uh, I need to say that I've been only using this camera for three days and when I've uploaded this video on the launch day, uh, I've been using it for five, four, four days, five days and uh, I think basically it's too little time to really assess a product or a camera like this, but the thing with this launch is that this camera is so similar to the S5 Mark II and the S5 Mark II X just in a so much smaller body. So I've actually been looking for a small camera that I can bring with me uh, wherever I go and that will give me great footage and for the last six months I've been using the DJI Pocket 3 which has been great but if you really want that really nice look you probably need a bigger sensor and even though the DJI Pocket 3 has been really good I did go out and get the Fuji X106 because it has a bigger sensor it gives you a better image a little bit better dynamic range so the first time I heard anything about this camera, I heard that Panasonic might do like a budget full frame camera, uh, something that was a little bit simpler than the S5 Mark II and the S5 Mark II X. And that wasn't uh, too exciting for me. But when I did talk to my Panasonic contact here in Sweden, uh, and he talked about this camera, I was very intrigued because one thing that I wasn't realizing from the beginning was that how small this camera was supposed to be and when it comes to the size I would say that size is a very important factor when it comes to wh when and where you're gonna use your camera like a camera as the S5 Mark II and the S5 Mark II X it's quite a big DSLR so if you you want to use it of course you will have to bring your really big camera bag you have to be bring your uh, slightly bigger tripod and everything like that but when I heard about it being much smaller than that camera and also when I understood that the design was supposed to be like a Leica camera I was very intrigued because this would actually change a lot of things and I don't look at this as a budget camera from Panasonic because the price difference between this and the S5 Mark II here in Sweden won't be that big around two or three hundred dollars so because this camera is so much smaller let's see if you can see it's so much smaller than the s5s I mean the the difference is actually quite astonishing of course you Panasonic had to make some compromises and this is to be expected of course but the compromises that Panasonic has made has actually surprised me a little bit I wouldn't personally mind a slightly bigger camera if it had an EVF and the day that Panasonic if they ever will make a small EVF that you could pro put in the hot shoe I would get that I mean the same day because for me a EVF is so important now today we're actually sh out shooting uh, and it's kind of cloudy 
so the EVF doesn't matter uh, I'm not sure if you will be able to see okay you can probably see that it's quite light so today it's not a problem to see uh, to see what's happening on your screen so the compromises if you look at this camera compared to the big brothers from Panasonic are a few now a thing that I wasn't expecting was when I saw the body was that it would keep the same battery as on the S5s which is great so I'm guessing the battery life is quite good uh, but a compromise on this camera is gonna be that this doesn't have a fan Let's see here this doesn't have a fan so the recording times are gonna be limited I saw that on in 6k the recording time is 10 minutes and in 4k it's 15 minutes or that's not actually a deal breaker when it comes to me at least because a camera that's situated for a content creator like me where you want to have a small camera to bring with you i'm not probably going to shoot those 35 minutes or one and a half hours shoots with a camera like this so those limitations aren't actually a big deal for me uh, for a camera like that but they might be for other people So one of the most important things when it comes to the sizes, for me at least, that you can bring it with you. And together with the S9, uh, Panasonic has also launched this 26mm f8 lens. And I did actually laugh there. But it's a little bit of a strange lens to put out at the same time. You can see it's a pancake lens, so it's very small. But at first I was a little bit, okay, who's going to use this? But And this is a manual lens as well. But when I actually thought about it, this could actually be quite an interesting lens to use and it turns your S9 into a very small setup that you can bring with you wherever you go. Uh, I actually haven't tried this, let's see if we can put it in the pocket. But being able to have a full frame lens or a full frame camera with you wherever you go is actually quite a huge deal. Now Panasonic have also announced and small pancake well I'm not sure it's if it is a pancake lens but it's quite a small lens it's an 18 to 40 millimeter lens and it's supposed to be very small and I would probably get that lens in a heartbeat because having a small lens like that on a body like this I mean this setup wouldn't weigh basically anything and you could bring it with you and you could vlog like I'm doing right now okay so I'm a little bit backlit right now um, but one thing that I'm I want to test is the ibis how it looks when walking and this is supposed to have the same ibis as the s5 and s5 mark 2x which if it's true it's it's actually great and the thing that panasonic did uh, not too long ago is that they came with a firmware update where they updated the ibis and a few other things so now you can actually use quite wide lenses without getting that crazy ass warping that they had before and even though the warping was quite bad when you went vlogging under 20 millimeters it wasn't as bad on as on other brands so the setup that I'm using right now is the S9 together with the 18 millimeter lens uh, f1.8 So this camera also comes in a few different colors. Here you can see that I'm, okay, I'm very backlit right now. So let's see, I, here you can see the green one. Uh, I'm right now shooting on the blue one and I think it's supposed to be a red one and also a black one. Me personally, I mean, the green one actually looks better than I thought in the beginning and also the blue one. So they actually look quite good. I haven't seen the red one but I would probably get tired quite fast so I would probably go go with the, the black one if I was when I'm getting one because I am getting one and I would probably black out the Lumix part just to have it really stealthy So and <clears throat> to be honest, I haven't used all the new features that are specially on the the S9. There are a couple of new features. There is a new app, and I did download the beta, but I couldn't really 
get out to work and everything I'm using right now is pre-production so I'm guessing everything will work once it's out of beta program but the thing with that is that Panasonic wants you to be able to do is to uh, be able to let's see here to be able to shoot and then upload it really quickly and uh, I'm guessing that's a, a cool feature and I'm guessing that a lot of content creators would love a thing like that another new feature that's coming out is the real-time LUTs that you can put on and there is actually a button for that in the camera directly which is kind of cool and I think with that feature there Panasonic is trying to compete with with Fuji because they've seen okay what features do, do people actually love and that's actually a feature that I'm probably gonna use quite a lot even though I haven't used it too much now in in these few days because I've I've put my time in to customize the ca camera as I would use it uh, but those are a few of the new features so th this camera is probably made as Panasonic are, are saying for the content creator and it's not made for every content creator it's made for the fast-paced not recording two hours of footage content creator so Panasonic has done a really great job finding a hole in their own product line with a full-frame camera that's really small now one of the cool things here with this camera is that this camera is much smaller than a lot of their Micro Four Thirds offerings but once upon a time you bought a Micro Four Thirds camera for the size now you get that for maybe the longer tele lenses that are quite small as you know if you're following my channel I did get the Fuji X106 and I shoot uh, qu quite a lot maybe not as much as I, that I hoped but I, I, I was searching for a camera like this that I could bring in in my smaller bags and the Fuji as good as that is for video there are a few things that are quite frustrating one of the major things is actually this uh, having a flip out screen so there is a huge win for this also the image quality on this full frame camera is going to be better than the Fuji when it comes to video that's a big deal also the 6k on the Fuji uh, even though it's great it's cropped here you get uncropped 4k so there are quite a few things that they, where this is better I'm probably leaning to selling my Fuji and getting this instead also because I ha have all the lenses for this and hopefully Panasonic will be very quick with uh, releasing the 18 to 40 like the pancake small lens because I feel that a lens like that is going to be crucial for a small camera like this I mean of course I could use bigger lenses but then it defeats the whole purpose purpose be with having a uh, camera this small so when it comes to the let's see when it comes to the compromises on this camera I actually think that Panasonic has done a, a great job finding a balance f between the features they've that they've kept and the features that they've taken away now I understand that they don't have ProRes and ev everything like that because that would add cost to the camera with fees and stuff and also uh, I can understand that they had to take away things like the the headphone jack which I mean it is a it's a small bummer but I can understand it also I can understand that they only have one SD card slot and that's probably a feature that I don't care too much in, in my 15 years of shooting I've never had an SD card uh, go bad on me uh, now I do pay a little bit more and I use Angel Bird SD cards uh, or I've been using them for the like, past five or six years and I've never had one go bad so that's a cool thing so those are features that I understand that they had to take away to have this small body and footprint another thing that I thought that I would struggle more with was the lack of buttons on this uh, of course I would love if there were more buttons but it's acu actually for YouTube it's actually quite okay I also wish that they didn't make the recording button red because the first thing I did was to um, assign that button to to another feature than to record because I always use the shutter button uh, not a big thing but uh, yeah so I really think that Panasonic has made 
good choices when thinking about which features are important to have in a camera like this because having a small body like this is, is so nice and it's such a big difference between running around with this and running around with like a full full scaled DSLR so there are a few things in this camera that are like they, they come without saying uh, the 6k open gate is one of those the great 4k 422 is one of those and these are features that you find in this camera of course and the open gate is probably one of the features that that separates this camera from basically anything else or like Panasonic from anything else I, I think it's more important that I don't feel that a lot of people talk about the open gate on on Panasonic cameras and for you who don't know open gate is when you actually use the whole sensor not only 16 by 9 and that's great for social media it's great for reframing and post and I think that's probably the, one of the best features of course the IBIS on the Panasonic cameras is also great and class leading but the IBIS together with the open gate in 6k lets you really take this camera and crop if you do anything wrong let's record this dude Did the autofocus get him? I'm, I'm guessing it did. Uh, so yeah, you get all the nice things that you most of the time get with Panasonic cameras. One would, might look at this camera and say that, okay, you're getting 95% of all the features that you get in the S5 II and the S5 II X. I would probably say that you get 99% of the features because when I'm looking at this camera and trying to figure out okay which are actually features that I use on my Panasonic cameras when I'm doing YouTube I have to say it's actually almost ticks off the boxes on all those because I don't use ProRes when doing YouTube I do not use a monitor so I don't need a big big ass HDMI I don't use more than one uh, SD card so looking at those things Panasonic actually made good decisions on which features to take away to make this body as small as they did uh, when doing YouTube I never shoot more than like three or four or five minutes at the time when doing YouTube I almost never use my headphone jack so all of these features are actually features that of course would be great to have but when I'm doing YouTube I use basically none of them the EVF is probably the only one that I use quite a lot when doing YouTube uh, because I want to review my footage even in the sunlight but, but so right now the, it's 6 in the morning in the city, the sun is out, I'm seeing perfectly what's happening on the screen but I have to put it on the highest, on the, the backlit option, so I, it's on the 3 there and now I can see exactly what's happening uh, but in midday it could be hard at some times and some angles. I've been shooting the, with this camera for the 5th day and I'm actually getting used to using, not having an EVF uh, but I still miss it, but I'm getting the job done and getting sh shots that I wasn't sure that I would get. So that's probably a good measurement of how bright this screen gets. So this is more or less a camera that I wasn't sure that I would like, but it has turned out to be a camera that I truly love. Karaoke. Uh, and that surprised me. Uh, and it has all the features that I would actually need for YouTube it even is weather sealed which really surprised me because I wasn't expecting that especially when I saw the body I was like okay this is not gonna be a weather sealed so I didn't even ask uh, my Panasonic person Bjorn I didn't even ask him about it I was like a day afterwards I sent him an email where I was or an SMS where I was okay is the camera weather sealed and he was like yeah in the same way the S5 is so that surprised me that surprised me a lot actually because weather sealing is one of those features that is really important to me because I mean you can see it's a beautiful day today but most of the time in Sweden it's not a beautiful day you got rain you got snow you got basically the worst weather in in Europe but so weather sealing is so important to me and this camera is supposed to have weather sealing that's as good as the S5 II and the S5 II X and even though I'm talking about the weather sealing on Panasonic cameras since the GH4 
Uh, I've never had one die on me even though I've used it in quite crappy situations and in crappy weather. So weather sealing really important. So what are my conclusions about the Panasonic S9? Unfortunately I have had to leave it back yesterday. So this is shot with the S5 Mark II X. Uh, I really loved using it. Now I'm not sure because I, I was using the O.2 firmware and uh, there are probably some improvements gonna be made. A thing that I noticed while editing the video that you just saw was that autofocus, even though working really, really great, uh, sometimes could latch onto things that were like this in front. Now I can see here that my face is on in autofocus and this was a thing that I think was improved with the last firmware. Also the Voblin with the 18mm uh, was a little bit more than I'm used to or that is on uh, the S5 II Mark X or S2 my S5 Mark II X. So there, there could probably be some improvements in firmware, which there always are on the uh, with Panasonic. So, do I recommend people to getting this camera? Well, if you're gonna do YouTube and you don't need the full size HDMI, you don't need the headphone jack, you don't need the EBF, I think it's a great viable option, and I'm gonna get one because having as a carry-on camera that I can bring with me everywhere. It's a great camera. I'm also looking forward to that 18 to 40 millimeter lens once that comes out because I feel that that's actually an essential part of the S9 while, when it comes out. Having a small package like that full frame camera in your bag or even in your pocket, I mean, unbeatable. So I'm definitely gonna get it. Uh, I have a few videos coming out that I've already recorded where I compare the, the the Fuji X106 to, to the S9. Uh, that's one of the videos. So guys, if you know, have any questions for me, feel free to leave them in the comments. And as always, do not forget to subscribe for more videos about the S9 and camera gear in total. Well, see you in the next video that's out in a couple of days. Bye bye.